Hello there, right you be, it's Boots Owen here. As you can see in the pictures, I've gathered up a lot of washing machine motors over time and a dishwasher motor in there as well for good measure. In this video, I'm going to have a look at uh, how they work, what's inside them and how much water they can actually pump. It's a bit of a research video, I guess. I'll begin by doing a disassembly and investigating how the motor and pump works. And then towards the end, I'll do an experiment to see how much water can be pumped and how high. So there's a huge selection of washing machine motor pumps here, but this is as good an indication as any of what they do and how they work. Some of them have a filter. Some of them are just a simple in and out pump. So one with a filter here, and this one also has a drain off hose. And this just makes it easier to drain it before you open the filter plug. So have a look inside, there's your filter, and there in the bottom is the impeller blade. This one's a nice easy one to open up. So it rotates to unlock it, there's just this little tab here, it has to come past the plastic lock. So if I put in a screwdriver, that'll lift it up, I should be able to rotate it out then. So I can rotate that off and it should pop out and there's an o-ring seal and there's the housing and the impeller blade. So all the impeller does is spin either way and it forces the water up this hole here. So when the filter basket or filter plug is in place, it makes this little inlet here, and that's the outlet. And so water is present here and gets pushed up this way, out the gray hose on the back of the washing machine, or if it's a very fancy pump, around the recirculating hose. And so this is a motor for a pump. And it's quite simple. So this one has a housing on it, this white plastic piece. So let's get that open. I'm not too worried about damaging this because I really don't need it. So is it going to come off? It should do. No. And inside you can see two magical copper coils and some kind of a little, what is it, a capacitor or something like that. I don't know what that is, it might just be to pr make the direction of rotation just happen in one direction, don't know. So what's going on here then, how do we open this up? What you've got is set of coils, a pair of coils, that change the magnetic flux around these pieces of steel here. And inside in here, if I can get it open somehow, let's get the o-ring off. Let's look for a way to open this. So we can get that coil off by the looks of things, just by prising it off, there it is. You can see it's completely waterproof. There's nothing There's nothing where electricity could touch water. This is on the outside, and this water is on the inside here. So I push it back in. At the moment, it just spins completely freely. There's no resistance. I push it back in kind of flicks between settings. So there's some kind of magnetism going on here already. 
and because these are two electromagnets and they're not energized the magnetism can't be coming from them so there must be a magnet on the shaft here so let's try again to get in there so it seems that the only way to get in seems to be one piece of grey plastic and the only way to get in is just to pop it off so let's try that let's come up a bit there there we are pop you can see, even though it's completely wet inside, there's water drips out there. There's something going on here. So, this has the freedom to rotate. You can see that's spinning there, independent of the impeller blade. There's a seal, which seems to have failed in this case, because water's gotten in. But this is some kind of a magnet here, so let's get a piece of steel and test that. Yep, yeah, there's a screwdriver. And so, on that magnet... So this magnet is caused to rotate by a change in electronic flux. Or change in magnetism. On that coil so that's the motor there really simple quite inefficient as motors go but for the task and like very low wattage I wonder what it said on it do we have a wattage on that 0.2 amps so if it's one amp you're talking 240 watts so you're talking roughly 40 or 50 watt motor, very small. What I want to see then through some tests is what happens when I energize it and how much water it can pump or maybe how much and how high. So I'll reassemble it. And so that's it reassembled. For the purposes of the test, I think I'll use one that's pre-assembled. That'll take the hoses that I've got. Let's see. Something like this little one here. Or maybe this one here. And because it's got a simple inlet hose and outlet hose that I can attach to a water supply. This pump. It's a 30 watt Plaza pump. It came out of a service washing machine that I filled with gravel. So I just want to take a look inside it and see how it's responded to having gravel. And you can hear the gravel and see it falling out there. There also seems to be a bit of broken glass in here as well, from the looks of things. Quite a bit of broken glass. And there's the little impeller, which seems fine. Doesn't seem worn or damaged. And there's the inside of the housing. You've got some glass in there. But it's a pretty simple one. No filter in this pump, so the water comes in. This point gets pushed by the little blades of the propeller out this grey hose, which is the normal waste of a washing machine. The o-ring is in place, just there. So I've made an arrangement here with the washing machine pump, uh, with a bucket supplying water. That's the bucket in the shop there and I've got it hooked up to a power supply and the bucket's full of water so if I turn it on water will come out of the pipe I imagine so the white pipe comes out of the bucket towards my feet in the shot and the little washing machine 
pump is at my feet and then through that grey hose and black pipe the water travels to the point where it comes out. And so looking at it right there now the water is starting to slow down and that's because it's reached the maximum amount of head that that pump can manage. And that's about two meters, the top of that door there is about two meters, that red garage door. Now these pumps are designed to pump up to about the height of the back of the washing machine into a waste outlet behind the washing machine which is typically about 900 millimeters off the ground. So we've seen just under the force of gravity with about maybe 150 millimeters of water, maybe 200 millimeters of water in that bucket. The pump could quite comfortably pump, there you go, about a meter and a half, but the flow gets uh, greatly reduced as you go any higher, up to the point where it'll just stop completely. So the pump will continue to pump, but there's so much water after the pump that the, that the pump can't manage to pump it any higher. And that's because gravity is acting on that water. So the pump has created a volume of water, which is the head, and that's about two meters, and then gravity is pulling that back down again, and the pump can't fight that. So it gets stuck at that point, and the pump can pump that column of water and create that column of water, but it can't get it to come out the end of the pipe, it can't keep going. So I'll just let the pump drain down the water in that bucket now and you can see it flowing out of that black pipe behind. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to give me a thumbs up. If you don't understand it, ask me a question in the comments section below. Um, and please subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. If you receive some kind of value from this video, please hit me up on Patreon and check out that page. There's a link right here in the video. But there you go. Thanks very much. All the best. Bye bye.